next up is uh, still lecture one and this is stress part two and we're gonna be continuing towards uh, about uh, normal and shear stresses na. so uh, normal or average uh, uh, stress so again the uh, course outline and uh, we're still here and then we're gonna be talking about normal and shear stress and a little bit of actual stresses then okay so normal stress could be either tensile or compressive dito and uh, meron tayong tinatawag na the normal stress which is the applied uh, force over a particular uh, change in uh, area it's also considered average normal stress when the resultant loaded passes through the centroid of the object member surface and the object and uh, member surface is a very uniform cross-sectional area and normally, when we're solving for normal stress system, we're talking about average normal stress. Okay, and the equation is just like so. Force, sometimes uh, represented as P and uh, or F, and has a unit of newtons. An area, usually meters squared, and if here's our units, newton per meter squared is also pascals. One megapascal is one newton per millimeter squared. That should be MPA, P with capital and then pound force per inch squared or PSI, KSI or kips per uh, inch squared per kip, uh, one kip is 1,000 pound force. So be careful with those. So usually, uh, then of course, well, we have a procedure here. And um, normally when setting up for average normal stress, just like when we're finding internal loads, so we have to, you know, select our establish our reactions, determine our internal loadings. And finally, solve it um, uh, solve the uh, average normal stress and normally we're looking forward to the uh, force that is aligned uh, along the axis where the applied force is so let's have our first sample problem here we're here to determine the maximum of uh, average normal stress in the bar where it, when it's subjected to the loading below uh, so the bar is at constant con has a constant weight of 35 millimeter and a thickness of 10 mm so we're already given your dimensions here you go go so and then give us an area of what cross-sectional area of 350 millimeters squared and uh, we're required to find the max uh, normal stress here recall that the average normal stress is force over applied perpendicular area here so we have a lot of load detail so which means uh, we have to find which segment here has the greatest amount of force here and then from there we can determine the maximum amount of stress here hence we can uh, solve it by segments so we have segments a b b c and c d just like so and there we go so to find max stress here means finding where the max load is so we have here for a b we have 12 kilonewtons the force uh, equivalent there must be 12 kilonewtons as where f a b at that particular cross section and then we're talking about uh, bc naman so we have a combination here oops so we have 12 kilonewtons and 9 kilonewtons so that will be 12 9 9 that's going to be 30 fbc and then finally with cd that's just 22 kilonewtons so meaning the the segment with the with the greatest amount of forces in bc so that will be 30 kilonewtons so that will be the one we're going to be using so to get the average maximum average normal stress, we simply substitute uh, 30 kilonewtons here and then apply the area here, which is 30 15 uh, millimeters squared. And then, you know, uh, let's just convert it to megapascal. So, and we have here 85.751 megapascals. Okay. Let's try a different one. So let's. Uh, this is something that you're very familiar with before. So we have a lamp here. It's hanging and at two points, one at uh, 60 degrees and one with a given uh, particular ratio here. So we have an 80 kilogram lamp and it's supported by two rods, A, B, and B, C as shown below. If A, B has a diameter of 10 millimeter and B, C has a diameter of eight, determine the average normal stress in each rod. So we need to find the average normal stress for, uh, for rod uh, a, B, and then rod B, C. So, just like so. And then the next step here is, of course, let's establish first our FBD, you know, to find what our internal loads do. You go. So, here's our XY. We have the weight, 8 kilograms times 9.8.66. We have force FBC and force AB. And at 60 degrees there. 
And from here, we can now establish our uh, uh, equations of equilibrium by finding the load. So we can do first that one. So we can summation, we can get the summation of forces of x and y axis, just like so. And as you can see, FBC and FAB are unknowns. So we have two unknowns, we have two equations. So right, ne the next step is to solve them simultaneously. You can do this straight with your calculator if you want. But I prefer the old fashioned way of you know rearranging it algebraically. So you see equation one, we can equate FBC equals to this particular equation. 5 times FAB cosine 60 divided by 4. We substitute that to equation number 2. That would give us something like this. Cancel, cancel, all, all like uh, numbers. So 5, 5, cancel. So here we go. And then we will have uh, an equation rearranging them properly. We can now determine FAB. We already know the weight, which is 80 times 9.806. So isolating FAB would be something like this. And then solving it, we will have FAB at 62.16, uh, 1611. Oh, nice. USD. Newtons. And then we just simply substituted to our previous equation. So FAB here, we will now determine FBC, which is around 395.1007 Newtons. So now that we know FAB and FAC, we can now determine its respective average normal stress. So let's start first with uh, with sigma AB. We simply substitute FAB here divided by the area, pi over 4, 10 millimeter, 10 squared. So Newton over millimeter squared. That will give you 8.05 megapascals. And then finally for sigma BC, we'll give you FAB, FBC divided by area of BC. So that's going to be 395.107. 1007 newtons divided by pi over 4, 8 squared, millimeter squared, will give you 7.86 mega pascal. See, it's, uh, it's a lot easier if you're doing it step by step. Okay, and you can see uh, the trick here is not to be wrong with your algebraic equations. It's just really algebra and setting up your equations later. Okay. Okay, uh, another sample problem for our average normal stress. Here we have a, uh, here's a compression type. Command. Here we have the casting shown is made of steel, which has a specific weight of 490 pound force per feet cube. And um, determine the average compressive stress acting at point A and B. So technically, ito lang naman yan. So we ignore this bottom half na to. Okay, so we're going to draw the FB here, FBD here. So, um, something it's gonna look something like this one so there we go so there's the applied load here f and of course there's the uh, weight of the uh, the weight of the steel itself so so weight of steel okay and we have the ranges here at what point 75 feet okay the next step is we need to find the internal loads first okay so setting up the equation that was going to be summation of forces across uh, z axis is equals to zero that will be weight that will be force. Huh. Uh, yeah, I wrote this wrong. Uh huh. Should be. Uh, should be. Uh, there we go. Sorry. Okay. Okay. And uh, if you could, if you could recall what uh, specific weight is, specific weight is simply the weight of the material divided by its uh, volume. So it's, it's gonna be pound force per feet cube. We already know what for, what the specific weight is for 90, but we don't know what WSD means, which means rearranging the equation will give us WSD is equals to specific weight times uh, volume of steel. And volume of steel is simply the volume of this particular cylinder. If you know your geometry, that's gonna be, uh, Area of the base times height, so that's pi r squared times 2.75. So that's going to be pi 0.75 squared times 275. There we go. So our f here is also, f is going to be equal to WSD, which is equal to specific weight of steel times the volume of steel. So that's going to be 490 pound per feet cube divided by 
uh, times pi 0.75 squared feet squared times 0.2.75 feet. So this one will be a feet cube. This will cancel out and will give us a force of 2381.2291 pound force. There we go. Okay, and then of course, uh, finally, we can now solve for our compressive stress, our average compressive stress. And we will have this particular equation, which is f over a, which is 2381.2291 pound force divided by cross-sectional area, which is pi over uh, pi times 0.75 squared feet squared, which will give us around 1347.5 pound force per feet squared or 9.36 psi. And I got that by just multiplying it, by, by dividing it by 1, of, uh, 1 over 144. Uh, pounds per square inch.